Hi everyone, so I'm going to do some Renee Rance videos for you, um, based on suggestions and ideas and themes and whatnot, as given in the comments, so thank you everybody for your suggestions. I am going to mash up some of them because they follow a similar, a similar vein, um, so for example this discussion, I don't know if I'm going to rant that much because it's sort of redundant really, yelling about something when I feel like I should probably just ponder and ask you all to ponder. When you ponder you have to make sure you do this. Okay? Um, yeah, so today we are combining the suggestions of cliches in YA as suggested by MaxiPad1 and the YA, I just got this YA copycat story, so the fact that narratives seem to be copying one another continually and then they always get compared to one another as well. And the fact that they'll take a really standard uh, type and then that will become the, I guess, the, uh, the basic format or the, the, the level of comparison for everything else. So you'll have things being the next Hunger Games, the next Harry Potter, or the next Twilight, or whatever. And of course, cliches in YA sort of just speaks for itself because for the most part we know what they are. And I think this probably does, in general, um, apply more to the subgenre of paranormal romance. Uh, because to be fair, I think for something like um, contemporary realistic YA, there's a much broader scope to work with. I would assume, Melissa, you're the expert in that field, so you can um, contradict me or whatever um, and share your knowledge. But um, I would assume that it, it, because just by its nature, it has to cover or can cover an awful lot more. Um, cliches, I'm sure, are still apparent there, and I, you know, I can probably think of a few, but. Um, Paranormal romance, for whatever reason, seems to just have like a, a, a shopping list of things you have to get and incorporate into your story, it would, it would appear. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Which is sort of ridiculous in itself, because just the word paranormal could encompass so much, and yet it never seems to. And it's, it's fantasy, or it should be fantasy most of the time, it's much more heavy on the romance than the fantasy, but Th that should open you up to a myriad of things you could work with and yet people don't tap into that. They're lazy. They're lazy. Okay, so, um, yeah. I think that ultimately cliches and the same tired narratives uh, just go together these days. And what, what baffles me more than anything else is the fact that, obviously, readers are still purchasing these no novels and seeking out these stories and these characters and... Um, because there's so much of it on the frickin' shelves. I go into a book, well, okay, most of the bookstores here are closed, but I go into, like, a, a general store with a book sec section and look at the YA area, and you will find that the blurbs of almost all the books for paranormal romance are the exact same thing that we've read a million times before. And for me, at least, I've read them a million times before, and disliked them or severely hated them a million times before. So why go back to them and why are they still getting published? And clearly there must be a market for it because people still buy them. People still mark them as to read on their Goodreads list. People get excited about them and the hype goes. And I just wonder, is it like a safety net thing? Uh, and where the fault lies, like it's a chicken and egg thing as well because you don't know whether or not it's a demand of, of the readership and the audience wanting more of this shit, or if the publishers are encouraging it, and that's where they'll spotlight each month or whatever, like in terms of the publicity that they give these books, or if it's something that authors see that it keep, seems to keep working and get, gets money and attention and whatnot, so they'll take the same standard stock of shit and kind of put their own slant on it, which usually isn't very interesting or very different just to make it seem like it's original, even though it never is. So, where the fault lies is difficult to determine, and it, you just, I think, have to sit down and ask yourself, why do I still want to read this stuff, when there should be so much more that we can experience in, in Paranormal YA, in anything. <laughs> Books should be a new experience each time, not something we know, not something we can predict the outcome of, not characters we've already encountered a million times. Like, we know that we're going to get a female protagonist who is uh, plain looking, 
probably the most attractive version of plain looking there is, who doesn't have very much self-confidence, who doesn't think highly of herself at all, who has limited social skills, usually isn't good at sports, she says she likes to read but she never does, and she usually has some quirky sidekick friends, sometimes if it's going to be a love triangle she'll have a quirky sidekick guy friend who of course harbours unrequited feelings for her, and then in comes the dashing uh, hero of the piece who is brooding and mysterious and dark and very very sexy and very very handsome and a bit of a jerk and rather rude and quite manipulative and whatnot. And of course you have to dream of and like you he's dreamy and you have to idolise him because he's perfect and his version of perfect is frankly terrifying in my view but we know what we're gonna get and we get it every single time and we know the, the, the outcomes of the plot we know these things, so why do we want more of it? And here is the question, and I'm asking myself this too, I'm not trying to say everyone else is to blame and I'm, I'm you know, completely innocent here, because I picked this up. I haven't read it yet, so I'm not going to try and be too harsh and just prejudge it before I get into it, but I think I'm pretty certain I know what I'm going to get, and yet I got it anyway. And even the cover, we keep buying books because they have pretty covers, and the pretty covers keep looking the same too. Ever since Fallen, people have been doing this, like, you know, lone girl in the middle with the with the colour um, coded background and some, like, fancy work here. And we're seeing the same thing and thinking, oh, that's pretty, I'm going to get that. And then we read the blurb on the back here, and of course this girl meets the mysterious, sexy and unnervingly charming Vincent, who appears out of nowhere and sweeps her off her feet. Of course she does. And we've seen this so many times, so why? Why, why keep reading it? Unless you really sincerely enjoy it. But even then, you've had your cake. Stop eating more people's cake. You can eat this cake if you want, but it's the same freaking cake. Don't you want to try something different? Like a slightly different flavour? Maybe have a muffin? Or some banana bread? I don't know. Mix it up. I just... Mmm, it makes me... I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys know? If you think you know, please do say in the comments why this is happening. We're going around in circles, and I don't understand it because there's so much more that we could do. There's so much more that authors could do. So when we come across stuff that is genuinely original and interesting, we get extra, extra excited because it's something that isn't the same as all the others. Okay, so yeah, just let me know what you think. I haven't made any sense. I haven't reached a conclusion because there is no real conclusion to reach. Not one that I can see anyway. I think we just need to all sit and ponder. Did you ponder? Keep pondering. Get back to me.